Look, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here. And it's gonna be interesting. Asmogan did an already better video than I will probably ever do on this. So there's gonna be a link in the description to his because help the guy out. He deserves it. But I want to throw my hat in with this. Why? Because these fists are rated E for everyone, including some channels that I sometimes watch. So let's begin. It's all fun and games until someone has to be the Nazis. Hi there, you're watching Midwinter Minis. My name's Guy. And I'm Hattie. And in this video, we're going to be painting up some cool tank models from Bolt Action. Pro Those look like cool tanks, to be honest. A Sherman and a Panzer. Mwah. Nothing better for a historical war game. Nothing really better to your collection of miniatures than having a Sherman and a Panzer. Gotta be honest, I'm a sucker for these two. I really love them, and I also like the cute little, what are they called, tanks the Japanese used, which probably had proper names, but I forgot them right now, so it doesn't matter. So, good miniatures to use, and paint, and have in your collection. Probably the most popular historical war game. This video has been kindly sponsored by World of Warships, but we'll tell you about that in a minute. Really, I've seen a lot of people like World of Warships, whatever. We're going to try and cover at least one thing every month that isn't something made by Games Workshop, and bolt action is something we get asked to cover a lot, so we thought we'd give it a go. We've got a few bolt action bits and bobs on our shelves, so we grabbed the M4 Sherman, the most widely used medium tank by the USA and the Western Allies in the Second World War, and also the Panzer IV, the most produced German tank in the same period. Again, very nice and good choices to have in your collection and in your painting schedule. Very good ones. Now there's two of us, two tanks, all good, right? I asked Hattie which one she wanted to paint for the video and she said, please don't make me paint the Nazis. And that got me thinking. It's kind of hard to say if they were Nazis. You have to understand this and... Oh boy, here I am with the history lesson, but not everything that's related to the German army in the Second World War had to do with Nazis. It just so happens that people have this misconception that the Germans were all Nazis. Which is wrong. It's horribly wrong. Unless it was somebody from an elite special unit. You didn't really have Nazi members. Remember that infantry... Infantry? Yeah, infantry soldiers... Were not party members, mostly. A bunch of them. Many of them, in fact, were not party members, and this applies to some tank to a bunch of tank divisions as well. Not every soldier of Romania was part of the Iron Guard. Not every soldier of German of Nazi Germany was a Nazi. And not every soldier of fascist Italy was part of the fascist party. This is the biggest problem we have with the historical context where people just believe that because it's German from the Second World War, it's Nazi. It's not. That's history illiteracy, we can call it. Or just being lied to. Both of those work. Isn't that really the main problem with historical wargaming? At least games that are set within living memory of a generation or two. No. Especially not in this context. Especially not in any context. Sometimes you... History is not always made of the good guys. It's never made of the good guys. There is technically no good side in a war. There is a better side. Of course, there is always a better option than the other one, but not really. When it comes to historical accuracy, you try to do it as close to reality as you can, as close as possible. Because of that, somebody is going to pick to play the bad guys. It just so happens. The same reasons why we have games where you can be an assassin or games where you can be an evil genius. While we talk about that, we're going to paint up these tanks, but we'll pop in little descriptions of our painting processes and materials on the screen, just in case. Beautiful tanks. Always beautiful tanks. They look good. So you want to know how we painted the models? I'll go first with the M4 Sherman. 
Now, before we go all doom and gloom and dive straight into the problems with historicals, let's cover some... There is no problem with historical, unless, of course, you don't know your history, and you pretend to know history that it's mostly a bunch of fabricated lies that are spewed on just to sell a narrative. And that's a narrative that all Germans were bad. No, that, that's not true. America tried to paint this with the Japanese during the Second World War, which wasn't also true, which it stands the same. It is in truth in both cases. And you know, it's, a, it's more nuanced and complex. And who am I trying to convince here? It's not true at all. It's not true at all. Of the great things about them. They are more affordable to get into, with army boxes tending to run about half the price per model of Warhammer, for example. They're grounded in reality, so if you're not really interested in sci-fi or fantasy or maybe... Yeah, that's the deal with most historical games, they're closer to reality, and a bunch of them will have better prices, I've seen. Didn't really get into them quite yet, working on a horse heresy thing right now, a huge horse heresy thing, for me at least, so, you know. It is what it is. Maybe you're a history buff. This stuff is going to pique your interest. There's also something really exciting about living out well-documented battles on the tabletop with moments of unbelievable heroism, bravery, and victory against all odds. I mean, you can also get that by playing campaigns like the Horus Heresy, the Badab War, the War for Armageddon, one of those three ones, and even the Black Crusade. I, I did, well, it's nice to do the historical thing. It's not something you lack in fantasy and other well-developed, should I say, franchises. You have places to take inspiration from. But sure, it works. It's a real fight that you can relive and maybe come out with a different outcome. It's nice. It's historical. To a point. As much as the games allow it. As much as the games allow it. Huh, interesting. Anyway. Also, the rules, particularly for bolt action, are great. Well known and loved in the wargaming community for its blend of fast paced action, well balanced forces, interesting scenarios, and random activation that keeps you on your toes during the game. From a hobbying side, historicals are a lot easier to paint because most things are pretty drab and camouflaged, which makes for very forgiving paint jobs. No crazy multicolor wet blends, over the top saturation and contrast, or legions of super soldiers wearing colors that are a total pain to paint. I mean, you pick those super soldiers, you pick what color you make them. Well, let's be honest, you, you pick those. You can just pick something easy like Horus Heresy, the Dark Angels. They're black. <laughs> there ain't much to them. The same with the Justarian Guard for the Sons of Horus. Black. <laughs> The Raven Guard, the Iron Hands, black. <laughs> I mean, there are exceptions to this with a bunch of cases. And also, I think it's also easier to paint more historical figures because for some of them, detailing isn't, you know, at that point. But we've got to talk about the elephant in the room here. Or maybe the fascist in the gaming club? Now... Well, let me be really, really clear here. We're not accusing anyone of anything. We're both just genuinely curious as to why historical wargaming isn't as popular as the make-believe stuff we all love. What because there is a simple action to this. There's a simple answer to this. Historical won't get as popular as 40k, for example. That's because 40k built a huge brand around it. That's because 40k gets interested. Here, here's my example. You can build a bunch of stories from the Second World War, which is very nice. If you read Sven Hassel, you're going to be into it. But with Warhammer and other fantasy things, you can build from the ground up and you can make something that's even more dramatic than the stories we heard from the Second World War or from the first one, that is. It's easier to build up when you have nothing to start with. That's one example why Romania has a faster internet speed than countries like America or Australia. Because we didn't have the infrastructure and we built it from the ground up. There was nothing to replace as time went on. We just put in the good stuff and we just continued with it. That's the thing. 
it's easier to build from nothing than from something. Especially with creative stuff like this. One obvious issue is that the armies in historical war games were real and were made of real people and Sure, but I don't really see that as an issue. That really isn't an issue. Real people lived, fought, and died for their Yeah, and I could probably make my grand grandfather as a miniature in bolt action. Presume they have Romania in it. I don't really know that. But And the problem is that you're not really painting real people unless you really want to paint real people. Like I just gave the example earlier with my grand grandfather. You're just painting toy soldiers that you can give them a bunch of names and you can base them on real people. That's pretty cool. Or you could not. Same way with 40k. You can base it on real characters, real people, or not. That's one of the better things about this hobby is you get the creativeness or you get to be creative to do stuff. It doesn't mean your army was based on real people. Countries and ideologies in make believe settings. Again, the problem with countries and ideologies is the following countries work because, of course, you can have a German army, be German, <laughs> duh. And ideology is the biggest problem because, as I've said, soldiers and the people dying on the fields did not share the same political leanings as the ones that sent them there. A bunch of them didn't. Some of them did, but they were not party members. And the few that were party members, well, let's just be honest, you probably won't really get to play as them. So, that's not a problem there either. Neither is the one with the real people in it, I've mentioned earlier. Things like Warhammer 40k, the baddies, by which I mean everyone. Wrong, the Imperium's the good guys. It's... Hard to say it to some, yes, but the Imperium is the good guys. As close to good as you can possibly come in the 40k universe, where survival is what makes you good. And also the fact that you're human, you should be cheering for the humans. Duh! The Starship Trooper never taught anybody anything. I was just gonna glance over the whole lessons we learned from every fantasy thing, every sci-fi thing out there and side with the things that are not human and want to get rid of humans. I'm just saying, that's a bad way to see things. Race Trader. <laughs> don't really exist. And while they might be allegories or warnings of how humanity may end up, the crazy space fantasy aesthetic and over-the-top vibe of the whole thing stops it from being grounded in reality and makes it more palatable. In a world where even the good guys are horrible, the baddies are... I mean, the baddies are ten times as horrible. Badder than bad. And you have to understand this, I like how they're mentioning this, like, oh, the baddies are... the good guys are horrible. Because it's true, because here is the nuance of war and life. The good guys that you always learn about, that won all those wars. Who would have thought, right? All those good guys that won all those wars in history until now, well, they were also horrible. And I mean it. Nuances. Important to see them. But then again, as I said before, the Imperium's the good guys. And in the stories and background of the game, they commit horrific atrocities and war crimes, but they're not real. It's... Eh, war crimes, more crimes. It's the 40k universe, what do you want us to do? Make peace with chaos? See how that works. It's escapism. Like watching a scary film. It's fun because it's not real. Yeah, exactly. It's cheeky fun, to quote the text on screen. It's cheeky fun. Not real, it's escapism. You're supposed to get out of things thanks to it. The other side of this coin is historical war games like Bolt Action. Basically, someone has to play as the Nazis. Or Not really, you can probably have British against American forces. Same way we can have Blood Angels against Imperial Fist and Horse Heresy. Which, by the way, the Horse Heresy is also historical. It's close to as his a historical game as you can get while being a sci-fi universe. Now, you don't really have to have people play as Nazis unless they want to. That's the thing, you, there's not, there, this is not an extra credit thing where, oh, you just end up as playing the Nazis. No, you didn't, you picked it. 
you picked it willingly and you picked it because you found something you like maybe the models maybe the paint scheme or maybe you just thought it would be fun to be the bad guy in this mission in this fight no problem to that there never has been until midwinter minis decided to make it so isn't it or at least a nazi allied army understandably you mean Italian or Japanese or Romanian or Hungarian? Shall we say Finnish? Yeah, I know that's gonna push all the buttons, but yes, we will say. Oh, we will also say Finnish. Again, doesn't really matter. Somebody picked it because they liked it. Hell, I would play a Romanian army because I'm Romanian and I love my history and I love my country, warts and all. Thing is that I would do it because I like it. It's not like just end up playing a Romanian army because reasons. See? People do things because they like certain stuff without being drawn and tied to real world equivalents, equivalent things and ideologies. See? It's escapism. You know what else is escapism besides Warhammer? Bolt action. It's a game you play for fun. Not something you're supposed to take deep philosophical political discussions into and not play the game. Oh boy. Some people might feel that playing as the Nazis is inherently immoral or offensive, regardless of the historical context. It's Which is dumb. Let's be honest, you're not playing Nazis, you're playing Germans. Huge difference. But it's also dumb to just refuse that. It's like, we can't mock Hitler anymore <laughs> because it will empower the Nazis. No, it won't. Making fun of it won't do that. And just deciding to play a German army because you like the Panzers and how they look doesn't make you bad. Seems maybe a bit yucky or weird to be having fun playing as them or collecting them. Not really. If you like history, and you are a true fan of history, you'll like it with all its good guys, few as they may be, and all bad guys. Like, let's be honest, somebody has to play the Gauls when I play as the Romans, okay? Somebody has to be the bad guy. It's not me, because I decided to play the superior and correct faction. This was all a joke, in case you didn't get it. I know, I'm here all night. Still, there's nothing bad to it. Take history as it is with good and bad and you appreciate everything about it. Not only those contrived notions and lies that make you feel good inside. Them glorifying or romanticizing a regime that committed real life atrocities. The stuff also happened within living memory of some people. This is a strange one. Because it fails once more to do the difference, to make the distinction between Nazis and Germans. You see, not every German is a Nazi, but the Nazis were German. That's where the point you got stuck in. The Nazis are German, and that's where you stop. And that's what most people seem to stop, because they don't have the range to understand history and the fact it has more nuances than all the lies you've seen. You're not playing necessarily as the bad guys. You're not playing as the Nazis. Unless you really go out of your way to be the guy that plays as the Nazis. See? You're not playing Nazis. Or against Nazis. Or choosing to be one. And I don't think people romanticize Nazism. Except Nazis. Or neo-Nazis, I guess. But I doubt there is, you know, that much parallel. Parallel. Yeah, weird word. There to make in this case. Because this argument is exactly like the extra credits one. And it's still just as bad. The stuff also happened within living memory of some people. Now those people are really old. He, really, he says that those people are really old, and we're talking about if somebody was born at the end of the war, that person would be 78, which is a remarkable age 
to get to. It's a remarkable age to achieve. But a bunch of them are kind of dead. And we're not going to go into topics that YouTube will punish me for. Because it's more nuanced. But yes, it is true. Most of them are dead. Some of them are still very old. But I'll leave it at that. Now, to be fair, and they probably won't be playing war games, but their families might, and it might leave a bad taste in their mouths. Many people have experienced trauma or have family members who have experienced trauma related to the events in the Second World War. Now, both Hattie and I have family members who actually fought in these wars. Both our grandfathers were in the RAF. My great grandfather was. Ten German bombers in the air. Ten German bombers in the air. I like the song. I, I learned that the. British does something weird about the song too, so fans of England won't be able to sing it when they played against Germany in the World Cup or something. It's a fitting song. Again, this is whole this thing that he's saying now is based on the idea of generational trauma. The fact that if your ancestors lived through something traumatic, then you as well might be triggered and offended by it. If so, I want to know. Where's my reparation money from the Turks and the Russians? Because <laughs> they haven't really been coming in, to be honest. The problem with generational trauma is exactly that. You did not live through that. You're basically trying to relive, re-experience what your relative has before you. Because at the end of the day, you are not there. You are not... In the camps, you were not in the gulags, you were not starving in the fields, you were not fighting against the Turks, you are not there fighting against the Russians, the Ottomans, the Hungarians, the Italians, the British, the French, or the Polish. You were not there being offended or triggered by it just because your grandfather went through that is weird and strange and it shouldn't happen yes what your grandfather went through is horrible it does not mean that somebody inconveniencing you is the same or somebody choosing to play germans by the way in bolt action is somehow supposed to be offending you I was awarded the victoria cross and i'm pretty sure that Given the scale of these conflicts, most people watching this video will have family members who were involved. Playing a game... Yeah. <laughs> family members were involved. Remember I said my grand-grandfather was part of the Romanian army? Oh, for what side did Romania fight it, yeah? Until we switched sides, of course. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, playing as Soviets against me wouldn't really affect me. And probably neither would playing as Hungarians. Because that's the biggest problem. It wouldn't affect me. And it's not really supposed to affect you. You are not your relative. You are not your ancestor. You have no technical connection. You didn't live that. To play on. Where one player is controlling the Nazis might not sit right with a lot of people. Again, this is just weird and strange. It's a feeling people really shouldn't have because historical wargaming is also a form of escapism. And that's what's being missed here. It's a game, a war game, and it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be escapism, just like 40k is. Billions must Warhammer. The idea is simple. It's still a game. And playing as the Germans in the Second World War isn't bad, evil, and it shouldn't be offending. The power of the pause, 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 bleh, pause button gave me the ability to go grab something to eat. So because of that, I think we're going to miss this point here and just go on to the next one work from there. In simple terms, games that are based in realism, portraying real life death and destruction that happened is going to turn a lot of people off. Killing Yeah, sure, I guess if you're pansy, if fictional destructions scare you, because remember, you're not really committing those crimes, you're not really doing them, because 
it's a game it's a game where you get to play as the bad side fighting each other or fighting against the good side or <laughs> the good side fighting against each other let's be honest this argument was dumb when extra credits made it dumb when they do it fantasy space bugs with stompy robots awesome let's go also, let's not pretend that far-right groups don't still exist, and that their supporters might be into tabletop games. Let's not pretend that far-right isn't something that's thrown around just as much as the word Nazi is today to paint anybody that doesn't agree with certain ideas and politics. Because we all know that's what happens. We all know so damn well. In fact, it's not even a joke at this point. Okay, so I think my tank's done. I'm really pleased with how that camouflage turned out. Yeah, okay. Turns out blue tank. tanks are really useful. Very nice looking tank. Good job. Useful tool. Also, I'm glad I did the two-tone in the beiges, because I think that gives it a little extra spice. I think it's pretty cool how using matte varnish over a transfer makes everything look like it's just painted on and supposed to be there rather than a transfer. And this was actually my first time using transfers, so I think they turned out quite well. Actually, this is the first time I've painted anything historical, and it was surprisingly easy. If you get the basic elements right, you just need to add a little bit of weathering and it's pretty much done. Although, maybe I could have eased up on the mud. So, Hattie's done, I'm up next, a perfect break in the action to tell you about the awesome sponsor of this and video. And we're just gonna skip this part with the sponsor because I don't like World of Warships. I don't like the warship combat in War Thunder either, to be honest. This just saves us a bunch of time, in fact. Good at this. Back to the painting. I'm going to give the Panzer IV an efficient, speedy, but hopefully pretty great looking paint job. Now, not wanting to paint everyone with the same brush, but what reasons might a person have for actively collecting an Axis army? Because it's the other side of the war. People like collecting stuff. From both sides. Why do people willingly play chaos? That's a very good question. And it paints as well a broad stroke as this one. <clears throat> Why do people actively play chaos when chaos are the ultimate evil? Because it's fun. It's fun to play them in a war game. Simple. And they're nice miniatures to collect. There is no other reason than because somebody likes it. Me. Maybe they're just a power gamer. The Germans had some really good equipment, tanks and tactics. Maybe they just want to win the games they play. Maybe they're a historian who studied the German perspective of the war. Or to You're answering your own question right here. It's always a good answer. Understand the psychological rationale behind regimes like Nazism. Maybe they're just big Hugo Boss style aficionados, but... Throw those. Hugo Boss is a nice thing. It's too expensive though. Modern and all day Hugo Boss. Way too expensive. Way too expensive for any normal person. Maybe, just maybe, they might be slightly too into it. Or maybe you're just making a dumb argument for the sake of making a dumb argument. You see, people get so scared of the ideas of Nazis in anything not being portrayed as bad or you getting to play as them that, um, they really go off the wall bonkers. Especially with stuff like this, where again, you're not playing Nazis, you're playing Germans. Unless you want your German army to be Nazis. There are a bunch of reasons, some even mentioned by Midwinter Miniatures here, why somebody would collect and play a German army, or hell, he said it better, an Axis army. There's a bunch of it. And to just say that they do it, oh, some of you maybe do it because you're into it, you're real Nazis, is a dumb argument. It's really dumb. Do you support the persecution of Japanese people if you play an American army? Or of Germans, for that matter. Germans that did nothing, Japanese people that did nothing. This broad stroke and way of painting stuff can always circle back to you it always gets back to you because neither side is clean and to accuse somebody as veiled as this is of being a nazi is dumb ridiculous 
and really lowers my opinion of someone. In this case, Midwinter Miniatures and his co-host. I don't know what she is. Another reason historical war games like Bolt Action might not get the same traction and community engagement as stuff like Warhammer is because, for us as content creators, making a video that talks about stuff like the Nazis and maybe uses swastika transfers and other stuff like this will get your video demonetized. Yeah, but that's also YouTube's the chronic or draconical policies where nuances, exactly like in this video and in your head, do not exist and there is no way to differentiate between somebody that's evil and somebody that's just doing something because he likes. You see? It's all on you. Bolt action isn't popular because they don't have the money to do it. And the game isn't popular because, let's be honest, Warhammer offers something different, something bigger than Bolt action does at this point. Simple mathematics. And good at calculations. I'm great at calculations, in fact. This video should be proof of it. We probably won't make any money from YouTube on this video because of that, so it's obviously not a great topic or franchise for YouTube videos. Yeah, somebody tells me you will make money out of it. I have a slight doubt looking at the thumbnail and the name of the video when it comes to you making money out of it. I'm kind of certain you will be making money out of it. Very certain, in fact. At least for channels like us who do this as their actual job. Now, what a perfect time to remind you that we simply couldn't do this full time without our amazing support on Patreon. And we'll give our newest members a big thank you at the end of the video. So on paper, a great historical war game like Bolt Action has every right to be the main tabletop miniatures game, rather than... Every... You can say that about every game out there, it, ha it deserves to be the main one. Not everything will be like that. Fair is getting what you deserve, not getting everything at once, or not having the same thing as somebody else. Give them the money and the market power to compete with Games Workshop, and they'll do it. Gladly, I tell you. Spend enough money on their stuff, so they can compete with Games Workshop. They're gonna have a field day. And if they keep their prices at this rate, probably beat them. But we don't talk about that. Other than Warhammer 40k, but it's not. People say 40k is so popular because it has such a rich lore and backstory, and it's been going since the 80s and how Exactly. That's it, that's it. Those are good answers. Will you believe them or will you be stupid? There's over a thousand novels written about it, and hundreds of tabletop games and video games to immerse yourself in. Exactly. But hear me out here. The Second World War started 85 years ago, and has, let's just say, much, much, much more lore. Tens of thousands of novels, thousands of documentaries. Oh boy, this is really making me say something that will punish me more than YouTube will punish Midwinter Minis. Just have to find the proper way to say it, but I'll get it punished. And one of my friends is on Twitter, on Twitch right now. Anyway, not everything there is true. Sven Hassel, amazing writer. He went through some of those things. And clearly see where things have been made, you know, be more for the writing of it than anything else. And again... We only look at documentaries and read books that have bring no nuance to the discussion about the Second World War. They're not bringing anything interesting. I also bring in what I said in the beginning with, you know, it's easier to build than from nothing than to build on top of something. Thousands of films and hundreds of video games, as well as accounts from real humans. One of my favorite memories of when I was little was listening to my granddad's war stories. Now, for some people, the historical aspect might be a turnoff, kind of like forced learning. I mean, not ever. Yeah, of course. You also have to take into consideration the aspect that not everybody's into history. <laughs> not everybody's going to be that into being historically accurate. That's one of the reasons why not that many people are into the Horus Heresy. People will like different things. Just so happens 
can't do anything about it except good use good marketing and have the money to do that but that's a different story everyone enjoyed history at school after all also, people that play both Warhammer 40k and Bolt Action pretty much unanimously agree that Bolt Action is the more fun game, with modern, engaging rules and gameplay. And Bolt Action, while it's still a pre- I have no comment on that one. I don't know anybody like that, so can't really comment. ...premium franchise and isn't cheap, it's still far more affordable than 40k to get into, and it's easier to paint. So, on paper, it's all coming up bolt action. So, why can't it knock 40k off the top spot? Because it doesn't have the marketing power or the games about it. Like, it's easier to have games in the 40k universe and play them and understand what's going on through its bits and bobs than to do something like the Second World War. 40k, in its all beautiful, magnificent glory, is more interesting than the school subject of the Second World War. That's what attracts people to it. Hell, I know a guy that's into the Aztec War. Okay, he likes the way the Aztecs did war and stuff. There's nothing bad to it, but he's in the minority. And that's the thing here. Many people won't just be into it because they read about the Second World War. They know about it. They know the tanks that divisions and everything else and then well they don't really know anything about the emperor and the horus heresy and the invasion of armageddon or the third invasion of armageddon who, who's counting different perspectives different money you can build from nothing and get something great or you can build on top of something and well you know be where you are is it because someone has to play the nazis speaking of which no, you moron. It's not because somebody has to play as the bad guys. <sighs> I hate these people. My Panzer IV is done. Just like Hattie said before, I'm really impressed. Five or a shot with some interesting terrain and it's a lot of detail. TK, I don't but care. I think very easy to achieve. So hopefully if you and there's something else we're missing. Let historical war games. Let us know too. Yeah, Would you're you have missing a brain, a proper functioning brain, and some knowledge about history and understanding things. You're missing a lot of stuff, but the painting is good, so I guess that works. If you just want to listen to someone talk bullshit, the same way extra credits did <sighs> while well, they paint a nice miniature. I guess. I guess a nice miniature compensates for something. But at this point, doesn't. It fucking doesn't.